How we doing out there tonight? Hey, I just wanted to take a moment to thank everybody. Uh, the channel's up to 400 subscriptions, so doing really good for the first three months. Um, if you're new to the channel, coming over from somewhere else, go ahead and hit the subscribe if you like the content. So today's video, what I want to go over is you see your kilohertz, the different kilohertz you can use on your units. So more kilohertz doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be the best performance in every situation. And I'm going to go ahead and show you some of that. I've got some questions on a GT56 transducer, which is Garmin's new transducer. And it'll put out, you know, like, like 1,070 kilohertz, crystal clear images. It's wonderful. I don't have one, so I really can't demonstrate it. But, but, and some of you probably already subscribed. MG Marine Tech, he does a really good job. He's got some great content on his channel. Uh, you guys go over and take a look at his stuff. He did the comparison between the GT54 and the GT56. And you can kind of see what the differences are going up to that over a thousand kilohertz. Okay, so this should be really informative. We're going to do it on a whiteboard today. We're going to go old school. So I hope you enjoy it, and we're going to get right to it. we go through all these you got to realize that I'm taking this off of an Ecomap 93 SV Garmin unit with a G52 transducer so depending on what type of transducer and what type of uh, sonar unit you have you may or may not have all these options or you may have more options I did one section earlier where I shot it using the uh, the sonar unit and I actually show you how to make the changes on the screen. But first, let's go over some of the basics. So, traditional sonar has several different settings that you can put it at, and it changes the cone angle. You can see 230 hertz is 16 degrees, whereas 145 kilohertz is 24 degrees. So what that's doing, the higher the frequency, the smaller the area it's looking at. This is the floor of the, uh, the lake or ocean or wherever you're fishing. And the lower the frequency, the wider it is. Now, the lower frequencies, what that gives you, that gives you more penetration. See a much larger area with the lower frequencies than you can with the higher frequencies. So, like Garmin, they have what's called a split frequency sonar. And you'll see that a little later in the video. And what that gives you the ability to do is have your high definition on one side and your low definition on the other. So some of the advantages to using just traditional sonar, if you're drifting or you're at slow speeds, it works much better than the higher frequency larger arches you can actually see the fish a little better and it you know if you're just drifting along it'll show you a pretty large arch deep water penetration again whether it's in the you know the chirp the uh, clear view the side view or the traditional the lower the frequency the farther out or the more penetration you have and the traditional is not good in rough water uh, it just gets real jaggedy. So those are the pros and the cons of the more uh, traditional type sonar. All right, so let's talk about chirp technology for a minute. Chirp is compressed high intensity pulse. So the chirp, I don't want it. When I talk about having better penetration with lower frequencies, I don't want to scare you guys away from using it. Uh, I went to the Garmin website and looked, 
And as you can see with a GT54 UHD transducer, your traditional chirp, you can go 800 foot deep, clear view, 200 foot deep, side view, regular side view, uh, 500 foot deep, and ultra high definition side view, 125 foot deep. So you still have plenty of range, but there is a difference. So just wanting to make everybody aware of that. Traditional, you have what's called chirp. And in the traditional, it's a 19 degree cone or circle, which is a pretty good size circle. So I actually set one side of mine on my split frequency. I set one side to chirp and the other side to uh, the 24 degree cone. So I get a little bigger pattern on one side. Anyway, so the chirp technology, you get it in the traditional as well. Okay, so unlike the traditional, when you go to the clear view mode, it does give you a, a down image. It gives it to you in an oval pattern. So it's a, it's a much narrower pattern. It's not a circle like in the traditional. So what you got basically is a, is a big U shape and it sends out multiple frequencies to give you that real sharp image that you see. And they explain it basically like being a copy machine. So if you've ever watched a copy machine with the lid up and you see the, the little uh, petition just moving slowly across there and then taking a picture and chopping it up every so often, that's basically what it sounds like you're doing with the, with the clear view. So it collects much more data and it sends out multiple frequencies to give you the sharpest image you can. Now, they call it chirp in some models. You'll see in the video where mine says uh, Clearview Chirp. And now they went to calling it ultra high definition. So that's something to keep in mind. And here again, like the Clearview, the side view gives you a narrow oval pattern and with the uh, side view, you do get two choices or maybe even three, depending on your unit. But the higher kilohertz is going to be a smaller pattern, more narrow pattern, and the lower kilohertz is going to reach out farther. So, you know, if you're really in search mode, just looking for structure, uh, you can set it on that lower kilohertz setting and reach out a little bit farther. Uh, if you really want to zero in on something, uh, like your ledge fishing, uh, you may want to you may want to offer the higher kilohertz. Of course, you're going to get a better picture with the higher kilohertz than you are the lower on the structure. Um, so those are some of the advantages and disadvantages. So I also wanted to mention, if you're wondering, um, the video I shot where I'm actually using the sonar unit, uh, you'll see it's a 52 GT um, transducer rather than the 54. My original EcoMap Plus came with 52. That's what I have on my trolling motor. And when I shoot these videos, I put it in the front cradle because it's easier for me to reach and set the camera up. So when I shot that, it was looking, I've got my transducer set up to auto. So it automatically saw their GT52 transducer. And so all the settings are set to that transducer. On the console, I use the GT54 UHD, which has different settings. So, uh, not trying to confuse y'all, but uh, that's the reason you see the 52 GT a little later here in the video. In your sonar up here, I want to start out with this split frequency. And this can be pretty handy when you're doing vertical jigging. Um, sometimes I'd have problems, you know, finding my lure. You want to see your lure bouncing around out here so you can keep it in the strike zone with the fish. And, uh, if you got your cone too tight and you're not in very deep water, that's, that's hard to do. But if you're in deeper water, it's really pretty simple and it works good in the traditional mode. So in this split frequency, if I go to menu, and then I go to beam width. My left screen, right now I got it set on chirp. 
and I like keeping it there. Chirp is a good, good universal. Um, so we'll go back. But my right screen, I got that set for a wider cone angle at 24 degrees, which is going to give me a larger pattern. So you can see, you can set these however you want to. Let's go back, go back this left, and we could go ahead and set it up to a 16, whoops, to a 16 degree. And then we got 16 degrees on the left and 24 degrees on the right. So you can see a little more broader spectrum on the right and you can really zero in on it on the left. So that's a pretty handy feature for just a, uh, a quick setup on that split screen for the traditional. Of course, you can do that in your regular traditional by just going to menu. So you can set it by frequency. Now look what, where it says beam width. I'm at 145 and 24 degrees. So if I go to my frequency and I go to chirp, see it automatically changes that beam width to 19. Or if I change my beam width, let's change it to 156, which is 22 degrees. See, it changes it to 22. So those two, no matter what you change, it's gonna follow it. All right, so unlike the traditional, the clear view, I've only got a couple of options when I go to clear view. Go to my menu, and if you notice, I don't have a beam width on here. All I have is a frequency. So I've got a choice between 455 and 800. And I can set that up however I want it, but I can't change the beam width. Like the traditional, the beam width goes with the kilohertz. Now, like I say, your unit may change. I've got the GT52 transducer. So depending on your transducer, you know, you may have uh, different frequencies you can set. Check your unit out. You may not have the same options I do, or you may have more, but you got those frequencies there, 455 and 800 on mine. So that's on the clear view. Now I keep going back, you don't have to do that. If you just hit the menu button, it takes you back. I don't know why I keep doing that, just have it, I guess. Okay, and same thing with the side view. Go to our sonar, go to side view, menu. You can see again, I've just got frequency and I can go 455 or 800. All right, so some, some general rules, uh, whether you're talking about traditional or you're talking about, you know, the difference between your 455 kilohertz and your 800 kilohertz in your side view and clear view is your lower frequencies, you're gonna get a larger, larger area. You can penetrate farther. Um, in the traditional, you get a little different, a little larger arches. You, they come out a little bit bigger. Um, penetration in deep water or you know on your side view how far you can look out and in your traditional when you're when you're just drifting your lower frequencies are going to work better in your uh, side view and your clear view you don't want to just be drifting it just looks bad but in your traditional you can go to your lower frequency and you know, you can see the fish underneath it, kind of like a flasher, if some of you remember the old flasher. And you do have a flasher mode on these units, if you want to learn how to use that. Now the higher frequency, you get a little smaller sample area, but you get very high definition. Uh, you can even spot your thermocline, you know, if you learn how to do that with your particular sonar unit. And that comes in real handy depending on what time of year you're in. 
uh, high speed operation. So you can go ahead and cruise along at three to six miles an hour and you get pretty good definition. As a matter of fact, when you're in your, uh, in your side view, you really need to be moving along fairly good for it to, to be accurate. And there's a setting on there for scroll speed. I leave mine in auto, uh, but you may play around with that a little bit as well. Those are things to consider when you're setting the frequencies up on your screens, in your combinations or in your regular sonar. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe. Let's get out on the water and have a great day.